Protection Paladin will actually be one of my main tanks for the first time in Dragonflight Season 1. I'm well aware that it's not the most popular opinion in the world, but I've really fallen in love with the new playstyle of Dusk and Dawn and the general ebb and flow of the class. This video is going to be focused on the Mythic Plus aspect of the class and the talent tree, and I'm assuming that you have a relative understanding of the class before we dive into this. We are mostly going to focus on the new talent trees, the optional builds, and talk about the general rotation, cooldown usage, and what to track for weak auras. Feel free to use the timeline down below to skip around to any section that you'd like to see. Quick disclaimer though, there are a lot to these talent trees, which has made defining a meta build much more difficult. While you can find a build that covers most situations, you should always feel encouraged to experiment with different talents to cater to your preferred playstyle, build, or just the type of content you're doing. Lastly, Blizzard can buff or nerf a class at any time. Please take the information in this video with the, the tiniest grain of salt. If anything changes, I'll do my best to update you if I can. If you have any questions, I recommend joining my Discord. That link can be found in the description below. Anyways, let's dive in. With current tuning coming out of beta testing, this is most likely the build that I'm going to be running and I would recommend running in Mythic Plus. I'm going to walk through my ideal build and then I'll walk through some changes in other builds that are interesting. But let's start with some notable choices and setup in the class tree. The main aspect of this tree and this build is going to be the Dusk and Dawn playstyle. I personally adore this talent and the buff management, and I know there's a lot of hate for this talent, so I will talk about the possibility of not playing this talent shortly. Sadly, I can't make Avenger Shield to give holy power though, so I don't want to hear about it. Dusk and Dawn can be maintained for most of combat if played properly. It was also recently nerfed, or buffed, so that should make it easier to maintain for the average Joe, which means that the rotation isn't as global locked, which is a net benefit. Another notable talent in this build is Sanctified Wrath, which means that your wings windows are going to be super powerful and it's going to impact your rotation. If you want more single target damage or more interaction with cooldown extending, you can also drop Seal of Order for Zealot's Paragon. If you want all three capstones, you can also drop Divine Purpose, but I think that the free proc of Word of Glory or Shield of the Righteous is just like too good to pass up and it opens up the rotation a little bit. Shifting though over to the spec tree, this is the build that I've mostly settled on. The larger components of this build rely on cooldown management and cooldown reduction through executing our building and spending of holy power. Most of our best choices are near the middle of the tree. Notably, we are going to pick up Ardent Defender, Sentinel, Guardian of Ancient Kings and Eye of Tear, and Final Stand. This has given us five super great defensives. Some of the cooldown reduction pickups include Resolute Defender, Get to the Golden Valkyr, and Righteous Protector. And then our damage is mostly going to come from things like Divine Toll, Tears Enforcer, Bulwark, and Bastion of Light. There are some flexible options here, so I guess we'll cover those now. So let's shift over back to the class tree. I personally like to opt in to the extra charge of Divine Steed, but you can easily trade this for another talent, but as a wheelchair, you'll probably enjoy having the additional speed. You can also trade Cleanse Toxins for something if you don't need the dispel. This is a great trade for Blessing of Sacrifice. Since Blessed Hammer tends to not do a ton of damage, you can also drop Seal of Reprisal stacks for other talents if, if you want. Early game, I'm going to be opting into Seal of Alacrity because 4% haste is really valuable, but with increased item level as the season progresses, we'll likely trade this out for Seal of Might. Often I get asked why Blessing of Protection over Blessing of Sacrifice. This mostly comes down to pathing, and before the recent buffs of the class, the rotation was extremely global locked, meaning that it was very difficult to use any of our utility kit without jeopardizing our rotation. But with the recent buffs and nerfs, it's going to be much more easy to use Blessing of Sac. Okay, let's shift back over to the spec tree. With the recent Word of Glory and Hand of the Protector buffs, one can now opt into more of a group healing build by dropping the far right talents that I was playing and staying close to the middle. And that path would look like this. It's hard to argue to not play Crusader's Judgment because of how it just carries our holy power generation, but maybe in future patches when we have a little bit higher haste, that might be possible. If you aren't playing Dusk and Dawn, you can definitely play Moment of Glory. For that type of playstyle, you might want to drop something like Resolute Defender, Divine Resonance, and maybe Final Stand to get those points. You can also drop Gift of the Golden Valkyr, but I think in higher content, this passive is just way too strong. I think that covers most of the optional changes, but feel free to experiment. If you find something that you really like, feel free to share below in the comment section. Regarding stat priority, item level is going to be king. If you have the ability to choose your stats though, haste will typically take precedence. After that, Mastery and Versatility can both carry defensive and offensive properties. Critical Strike sadly doesn't provide as much as a defensive benefit. It has some synergy with Parry, which can play into Grand Crusader, or the tier set, but this seems much weaker than the other stats currently. I've already covered the general Dusk and Dawn rotation in a video about two weeks ago, so I won't be covering it here. It's still pretty accurate, but the recent nerfs did make it a little less cumbersome to maintain, which is a good thing. That should be linked on screen, but if not, I'll also have it in the description below. 
One important note with this build is the holy power ramping we're able to now do with Blessed Hammer. Approaching a pole, whatever it might be, you're going to want to start by building holy power. This is a concept I talked about in that Dusk and Dawn video too. Your general rotation actually is going to be fairly simple and hasn't really changed much from Shadowlands in my opinion. While Avenger Shield doesn't generate holy power, it does provide a defensive benefit through talent choices. Your priority should be keeping Avenger Shield and Judgment on cooldown as often as possible. Your Blessed Hammer should just be used as a general filler or to gain holy power for Dusk and Dawn if you're playing that playstyle, or simply to maintain Shield of the Righteous. During Wings, you can use Hammer of Wrath over Blessed Hammer just for pure damage and holy power alone. Lastly, this kind of starts leaking into cooldown, but you want to use Divine Toll just on cooldown both in single target and AoE. But if you really want to maximize the damage it can deal, I recommend using it once you already have both Dusk and Dawn active if you're playing that build, and once most of the mobs are grouped up. It's ridiculously satisfying to hit though. Wings, for the most part, should just be used on cooldown. In this build specifically, we're just running a ton of different cooldown reduction talents. This means that we're going to waste the potential uptime if we're sitting on cooldowns that are affected by these. Most of the time I would also recommend using a defensive on pull. You can either use Ardent Defender or Eye of Tear. Both have relatively short cooldowns and typically you can use them to either start a pull or bridge a gap if you have a drop of your Shield of Righteous or you need to run away and out of your Consecration. Guardian of Ancient Kings can be used a little bit more aggressively and similar to like Ardent Defender of Eye of Tear, you can use it to bridge gaps. I wouldn't say use it on cooldown, but instead, you'll want to use this when there's a large influx of damage coming in. You are getting cooldown reduction from both Righteous Protector and Gift of the Golden Valkyr, so try to use it consistently. Lastly, we have Final Stand, and I personally use this one really aggressively. Resolute Defender is giving us cooldown reduction, and we're also using Unbreakable Spirit Talent in the class tree. Protection Paladin is the one and only tank with this immunity in their kit, which is just phenomenal. For the most part, you want to use your cooldowns as often as you can, but rarely together. This becomes a slight juggling act, but with enough practice, it's going to begin to feel natural. The more you run a dungeon, the more familiar you're going to become with the pulls, and where your cooldown should be placed. This class is very punishing if you mess up, at least compared to other tanks, so with that being said, I think it's important to track a few different buffs, auras, and abilities. First and foremost, a Holy Power Tracker is really important, and you'll want to accompany this with Shield of the Righteous Tracker and a Consecration Tracker. If you're playing Dusk and Dawn, I highly recommend tracking both of those buffs in order to maintain high uptime. Besides that, I suggest tracking your defensive cooldowns, both the buff and the cooldown recovery. This would include Ardent Defender, Wings or Sentinel depending on your choice, Guardian of Ancient Kings, Eye of Tear, and Final Stand. Everything else would be up to you then. I see a lot of people asking about my weak aura packs in the YouTube comment section. They are available in my Discord for Twitch subs and Patreon supporters. I have them for all 6 tanks and I update them quite regularly. I think I covered everything I needed to. I want to keep this shorter since it's really hard for me to make guides like these because I normally always end up just like ranting for hours about different synergies and builds and optimizations. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, please check out my Discord. It's a great way to get in contact with me and other Paladin players and tank players. Just a reminder that these talent trees are supposed to allow you to play different builds that cater to you as a player. Just because I say something or another guide writer says something, you should take that with a grain of salt and feel encouraged to do research or test different talents. I really just, I can't stress that enough. I haven't been streaming much lately with all the projects that I've been working on, but starting with the release of Dragonflight, I plan on swinging right back into my streaming schedule, a few days a week and a few nights a week, so feel free to check me out there. Massive shout out to Mag, Sarge, and Renova, and all my other Patreon supporters. Without them, there'd be much less of this. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.